Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and I am joined by VP of Lawrence Systems, Brett Shittum. We're going to talk about the worst wiring job ever, and we're going to do some lessons learned. We're not just going to rant, although that was certainly what happened when the project was going on. And in my, uh, I've been in business since 2003, which makes that a rough, it was like 18 years now. Yeah. Hands down, worst job ever is always going back to this. Now we made my be, indoctrination into Lawrence. Oh, yeah, yeah. Brett, Brett got to be involved in this project because uh, this is when Brett was working as a contractor before he uh, had a full time position here. And this was like, what did I get myself into type situation? Right, Brett? <laughs> at four in the morning, I was thinking that. Oh, yeah. We had a couple late nights at four in the morning to try to yeah. keep the project on schedule. Now. A couple of things you want to talk about on this particular project. One, the question comes up, how do you get projects? And that is done by Brett. Well, it's a, it's a relationship thing. Right? Most of the projects we get are built on the relationships we have with other IT companies. Yep. This is where you make the assumption that because someone's website says they do the same things you do, you probably shouldn't talk to them. They're your competitor. Uh, but in reality is you'll find that if you actually reach out and talk to the IT companies, they can actually be a good source of leads. Maybe you have a proficiency they don't have and vice versa, where you can lean on each other's skills. And this is one of those where a IT company that is within my geographical region that I've uh, went to lunch with the CEO owner of that company quite a few times. We've so we'll become friends. Uh, we chat every now and then. Good, good acquaintances. Well, you know, I don't hang out yeah. with them that much. But either way, the um, job came up and they said, we don't do wiring and cabling, but you guys do. So we gave them a finder's fee for uh, getting us this project, which was common in case you're wondering how that works from a uh, technical background. But that relationship we had with them brought us this job. But I... I don't know if I want to thank him for this mess, but don't worry. We have visuals we're going to cut to yes, a few times are. to talk about this to help jog our memories of disaster. Now, there one was of the some other fun in it, though, too. Yeah, there'd be some fun in it. And one of the things we want to do here is we're prefacing this because I also want to make sure we say our goal is to not just rant about this, but to also educate right. and talk about like what warning signs we've seen in the early parts of this project, ways we mitigated risk and ways that we, you know, made sure that this particular uh, project stayed on track despite um, crazy people being involved. <laughs> and what did we learn? Um, that we're not we going to do business with that particular company again. Not the IT company. We continue to this day yeah. to do business with them. We didn't care much for some of the behaviors of the general contractor. But then we also, as we dug deeper into the project, learned the uh, GC was being dealt with in a crazy way by the people that actually hired them. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll walk you through some of those steps right there. Um, but one of the, let's go a couple of things in case you're not familiar with this type of work, your general contractor, how would you describe a GC, Brett? Your general contractor is the person that really, um, he's heading up the whole job. He's the one hiring the wiring guys. He's the one hiring the plumbers, the electricians, the, the, the people that are actually going to do the work. He's kind of coordinating the whole thing. And one of the things we learned later was they weren't the original GC for the project. So you have the client that actually wants the work done. They want this building built. And then you have the GC they hired. Now, they apparently fired the other GC. And the other GC had also uh, had some missteps that we didn't we weren't aware of. We get in with the second GC. Then the next thing is um, we came in, the GC that we dealt with had also fired the electricians and brought in another electrical crew. So we seen some things there when we did the walkthrough that were other warning signs like why are you guys tearing out brand new electrical boxes well they were all put in wrong who put them in wrong the other uh people and then yeah. for whatever reasons that we are never clear on there was another wiring vendor who came in and they bid it but then somehow and we don't know really why we know they couldn't do it or wouldn't do it we don't we never got it that's why we were right. there so someone else is not someone else did it but they also seen our price and said that's more than the other people i'm like this is what it's going to cost for what you want Right. This is, I mean, this, this project was in the $200,000 range, roughly in terms of uh, wiring. It was just a lot of infrastructure to build. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of rooms. It was roughly 300 or so drops that had to be put in, but it's yep. also the structure. We're talking like TV mounts and everything. There's a lot of, it wasn't just cabling. It's, it's kind of the whole gamut of things. Right. Now, first step is contract. They, mm. People say, Tom, do you have a template? And it's actually the opposite. The general contractor has their co contract they give you. And uh, what do you think of when you first reviewed it, Brett? Were some of the dates a little mystical? <laughs> well, they it was funny because of having the the old general contractor that was fired. Their dates 
were set on those previous contractor agreements and they were they'd written those into our contract and we were going to have to meet those dates it was going to be impossible so the first thing we had to do was restructure the dates we would be able to complete certain tasks and one of the ways you get paid on jobs like this is there's the mobilization fee is yep. what they will call it. Mobilization fee means the deposit. Uh, and the deposit doesn't necessarily mean half. Now, a general rule will, will ask for like a 50% down or on uh, when we're doing a cabling type project or some variation. But in this particular case, um, they wanted it done right away. So we asked for a really high mobilization fee. Right. Now, this is often in construction broken up based on accomplishments. Like as you build out, you may have several payments to go across the job because especially with new construction, the job may take multiple months because you have floors being put in, walls being put up. So you may build a rough structure. And then as the next structure gets built, come in and do it. And then right. you put some stuff in the walls, then the drywall people come in and you do it. So you may get paid incrementally. But one of the things is with these unrealistic, which we did change in a contract, uh, we asked for a very large deposit on this. We actually yes, we got, did. I think, 70% of the money up front or 60% up front, I think, is what we wanted just to start it. And by the way, where the job started in the quote and where it ended, it didn't start as a $200,000 project. It was a little no, less than that. And they just kept adding on. Move. It was all the changes to the uh, scope creep, as a lot of people would call it. Right. So the scope of the work kept changing. It was, it was interesting. Um, I, think, I think part of also what we learned in this was the communication factor too. So we had that contract and that started the whole communication process of, of, of setting the right expectations. I think people need to understand you need to first set the right expectation. Yeah. And it's then true. you've got to communicate throughout the whole entire project. And I, there were issues we would have when we would go to meetings where not all the people and not all the players were there to actually have the right communication. I mean, there was one point where someone pretty much said, hey, yeah, you can use those wires. They were our wires for something else and they used them. Yes. <laughs> so that was part of it. Now, one of the ways you mitigate this, and don't worry, we're getting to the photos for those of you right. anxious. Well, things are time indexed. You just want to see the gore. Um, <laughs> the One of the ways you mitigate that is when you have meetings, and this is the, the reality is the default way humans work frequently is hey, while you're here, can you just do this or can you just do that? Uh, people will do and respond very well to verbal commands. The problem is mm -hmm. the question may come up, who told you to do that? I'm not paying you for that. So one of the things you have to do, and we were especially doing, they would have changes where they would tell us to literally put something on a different wall than was on the right. different drawings. The drawings were very mismatched. So we had to actually start taking the drawings and sketching on them where we were told, then we would always to do the CYA, um, we would cover our butts by emailing them and say, I know you asked me to do this. I want to confirm this is the way it's going to be done. Now, this is actually happening here in the office in real time. Um, the general contractor says, I don't got time for emails. He was kind of being angry and saying, get this over there. No problem. Just is the people on site would let us know in the office and then us in the office would then reiterate these emails. Hey, right. just confirming you've told us now to uh, put 12 more drops on this particular wall uh, that didn't exist before, by the way. Mm -hmm. So we would draw the, where the wall is and we're just confirming you want to do that. Sometimes they'd reply, sometimes they wouldn't, but either way, we always sent those type of messages because this later came up uh, on the back end for the billing of all the different overages that were charged for. We had them all in writing that were done. No one could argue with, well, your guys just chose to do them on their own without mm -hmm. actually listening to the GC. These are important little factors um, that come in there. Now, what we did learn, this is where a lot of the problems come in and we'll throw on some visuals here. They actually had moved an entire wall and that was where some of these problems would come in. We took pictures like this wall didn't exist, but you notice if you uh, I think we can probably zoom in. This one's kind of blurry. All these little drops in that wall. There's another picture of it. Um, that was all added. This was not right. like some of this was not original. And these were some of the problems that had come in. We learned that there was just a lot of craziness going on with the uh, contractor. They, they were, we were here in Detroit, the, company that actually wanted this building this was a new location for them here in the detroit area but but the, what would happen is they would fly in and point and change where things would go just on the fly people who were doing the um hvac system cut a bunch of our wires that were yeah. waiting to be installed so we come into that um there were so many changes happening so often it was 
it was kind of a level of insanity that <laughs> was really hard to deal with. We also realized this was part of the insanity of we put this ladder rack up and the, this wall wasn't there. Right. The ladder rack was supposed to go through to the next room, but then the wall was put up instead. <laughs> so, yes, I remember that. I was I was there that night. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we were doing working later in the day. And so you're not tripping over some of the other contractors. And it was just insane to go. That wall was not here, right. nor is it on any of the drawings we have. Who decided a wall? And we'd find out that the, the guy who uh, the people, the company and their team would fly in point and tell people to build a wall and leave <laughs> and then we're like there's a wall <laughs> right. so this was so crazy watching this happen um so this is some of the things that that led to was this much wasted cable we wasted yeah. so many spools of cable because they would cut stuff and it was a bunch of half cut cable and a lot of these runs were really long so it was just like ah it was such a mess uh trying to sort all of this out because we're like you know, they moved an entire room. I think it's this. This is one of them. This yeah. room was uh, you can see how there's like a space behind it. The wires all originally ran to the wall. They decided to move the room. There's about a 15 foot or 20 foot gap because they wanted a closet behind it for another one of the rooms. They tore our IT room after we ran the wires and pulled it back. This is kind of what it looks like towards the end. But it was just one of those things like we ended up with extra cable because we ran it 15 more feet so many all these runs that are now put into cable falls here but they just decided the room was going to be elsewhere that's yep. actually why some of these come back from over further as opposed to there but that's just that's an actually an exterior wall on the other side <laughs> yeah that was uh, i remember the, i was crazy yeah it was so many things that had happened in there and that's why we had like this this is another when we were pulling back mm -hmm. all the extra and then we had to cut all these um it was some of the most wasted cable this caused a absolute ton of overages on there uh it was it was a lot of that now one of the things that we also had that ha had us there late was they kept upping the schedule because they wanted an open date to get right. things open um I don't know if I should have said yes. There's that whole entrepreneur should have said yes, but Brett said we should say yes. So we, we actually agreed, but for a price to get yes. it done. So and we brought a team in to finish. We brought a team in. So we had the original uh, contractors and uh, quick clarification. The way we work here at Lawrence Systems is you say, Tom, on your website, you only have a handful of people. There's no way you handle projects this big. Yes, there is. We coordinate with a lot of different vendors and a lot of different contractors. Mm -hmm. We have a pretty good list. Brett is uh, taking over that burden from me of uh, managing all the contractors. In, in some ways, we act like a GC because we have other parties that get involved when we need projects. We use contractors and we you know maintain great relationships with them. By the way, this is one of the burdens you have to bear. Who, who has to get paid first, me or the contractors? Us. Well, you'd think so. That we gotta get paid. But <laughs> we try to do that that we way. We try to do no, that. But the way you maintain you good relationship with your contractors is they get paid even when you don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and we, But that's not the way it's always done. That's the way you have chosen to do it, Tom. Yeah. But it does keep a better relationship with these vendors. Um, they know when they work for me, they're going to get paid even when they see disaster strikes. So when we told them, Hey, we need these extras. They're like, we're going to need money. And my reputation is I'll pay them. I'm right. the one that had not gotten paid all the way into, into t late 2020 before they finalized the final overages right. to actually approve and pay them. But all my vendors, we actually use them for projects even after this. And cause they continue to get paid. They're like, and some of them felt bad. Like they're like, wow, you still haven't got paid on that, uh, that disaster job. Yeah. Nope. Not yet. That sucks. There, but they also don't want to say it. Glad you paid me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because we still need to keep these relationships going. This is one of those little things that when we we actually financially, maybe we'll talk about this. We self fund all of our own projects to be able to right. uh, do this. It does require keeping a few dollars on hand, but it does allow you to uh, maintain good relationship with vendors because we've got so many wiring projects we've done after this that with the same vendors with the same teams. But right. we did decide. <laughs> to stay till 4 a.m. a bunch of nights with a crew mm -hmm. that we were paying a lot of money each. Everybody got paid. Matter of fact, we had anyone that knew how cable ends went on. Even right. if you loosely knew how cable ends come I on. I learned uh, how cable ends go on. <laughs> That's where I learned how to punch down. Mm -hmm. Then we had more lifts. We had so many. Now, uh, the lifts, there's a few of them there. We did only put people on lifts that knew how to operate them. And actually, one of the cool things, there's that one photo, the penny. Let me find the penny photo. I think we Down. still have that in yep. here. 
that was kind of a fun thing was if you want to know how good these people are at operating the lifts. A little bit farther. There we go. Yeah. Well, this is the distance, and we had to get these wires uh, up and over this right here. If you want to know how precise they are, and they're driving it up and down, that's how close, not once, every time those wheels stop from that wall without leaving a scuff or a mark on it. Yep. It's kind of, it, it's, it's an art watching these uh, contractors who really know how to operate the lift. So we put the your high-end people. As far as boots on the ground, we had to test and label all these. It turns out that uh, that's easy. I stuck hard hat on anyone, any friends I had that go, hey, want to make a few bucks? Grab a hard hat because um, this was a complete compliance with OSHA. Yeah. Everyone had to have hard hats full time during the construction project um, and uh, visibility vests on there. That's why you see us wearing them. But um, yeah, it was like run around, stick test, stick test, stick, right? Does this one label, yeah. printing labels and things like that? We had so many yeah. people involved. But yeah, uh, let's just uh, let's just walk through some of the photos and you comment, Brett, on where where you want to have a laugh here. But this was some of the extra wire that was wasted. Uh, this is all. I remember walking six. into that and and looking at that, going, "I'm going to have to <laughs> take that and do something with it." And that wire does isn't it weighs a lot. It does. That's Cat Six A plenum, by the way. That was part of the yeah. um, requirements here. Everything was Cat Six A plenum. Everything was black. Everything Cat Six A plenum. One color wire. Um, there's some of the rooms, the spools we had just yep. stacking up everywhere. That was thousands of thousands of dollars of wasted wire. Oh that yeah. Just... There was so much of it wasted on there. And that's why we were taking pictures of just random things that were done, mm -hmm. um, up there. The electricians, they were, some of them were beside themselves too, because they had put stuff in, take stuff out. Um, they moved where things were. Right. This one, when they wanted this, uh, set up and those actually, uh, cabling that we pulled through on here. And I'm not even sure why we put network jacks sometimes on the outside like that. It was, we questioned it. We're like, are you sure it goes here? They're like, yes. Right. So some cabling. Now some of this is electrical, but then on, it's just really confusing because this that's electrical, but right here, which in the end there's garbage cans. This is where we ran it on this outside. This is what I'm talking right. about. These ones are electrical, but this little middle part is actually uh, data that we're not sure why it was put there. And we laugh because they, they built a garbage can. I don't know if I have a picture. They built a garbage can in front of it. Like yeah. bolted uh, the slide out garbage can systems. Uh, we mounted all these TVs. I think we did. Did we do these ones too? There was a, another contractor did some TVs. It was confusing. Um, I actually, I don't remember on this one. I think, I think this was somebody else. So ah uh, yeah, this one was a bowling alley. This is where it gets interesting because um, the bowling alley, these are the bowling alley stuff in there. This is like a family fun center. Right. Um, but the bowling alley, when they put this in, we had to deal with getting wire over there, but they were, we were supposed to put the wire, but no one told us where the wires go. So we kept asking. And then one day we came in and they put the bowling alley floor in and you can't drive a lift on it. So it became rather tricky to get that the was, wires was over there. a tricky situation. Boom lifts came into play. Yeah, we had to hang with boom lifts to get over this. So bigger, bigger equipment had to be brought in to um, get yeah. some of that stuff done. <laughs> oh, was, yeah. And they had uh, there's more pictures of that. This split unit's kind of funny because you're like, hey, that's a really big split unit for a very small server room. Yeah, the split unit was supposed to be for the full server room. Uh, insert they mystery wall half. that came up one day. And the HVAC people are like, we were told to put it here and spec it for a room X that's this size, but then they cut the room in half and they cut it in half. So the split unit was on this side and they're like, I don't know, I guess that's where it goes now. <laughs> yeah. It was a um, calamity of errors. It was such a calamity of things going on and people. Then, uh, Oh, the reason I took a picture of this, yeah. they moved the ceiling on us after some of the stuff was in. So what you're seeing here is kind of funny. The, when you put in the fire suppression, um, it has to be at roughly the height of your drop ceiling. So you know how the drop ceiling has a little fire suppression things that pop through. They move the ceiling height and then all the stuff had to be taken back out, drained and cut because they'd already done some of the testing on it. Mm -hmm. I, as I understood, at least that's what I was told. I mean, I'm not, I'm not an expert on that. All I know is there was a lot of angry people that had to come back and cut everything. They had, they'd already left. Like their part of the job was done. We ran the fire suppression. Right. Now they're back cutting and moving the fire suppression up a little bit. Each one, they had to recut and rethread all those pipes. <laughs> I remember seeing some of those guys coming out of the building, not very happy. Yeah, no one likes redoing work, and that was a big part of what 
it's it's one of those things like yes i was paid for it but it's like i ran that wire you guys cut it told me to run it somewhere else there's like this defeatedness that this job kind of gave you this sinking feeling yeah. um even it's not about money at that point it's not about getting paid on it. it's like really i just ran that and now you cut it you decided a wall arbitrarily needed to be moved x amount of feet over and yeah they also this have is a very track. large space yeah big space they had the go-kart track which was interesting because no one thought about how to get the uh, go-kart track hooked up. We asked that question and someone says, oh, I guess it probably does need wiring. So we sometimes would ask the vendors who were there, like the people installing the go-kart track and say, hey, what needs to be done here? And then it would uh, turn into, yeah, no one ever thought about that. But then you had to then put it in writing that we heard from the go-kart people and tell the general contractor who would then have to authorize the change for us to get paid. This is one of those things you have to be constantly, like Brett said, communicate, communicate, communicate in order to get this. Um, we know it needed to be done. We're being nice. We could have just played dumb and threw our hands up in the air and go, no, I don't know. Um, not my problem. But right. being but a little you, bit more You've forth, never I mean, done that. No. You've never, ever done we, that. We maintain, despite all of this, a really good relationship with uh, everybody involved here mm -hmm. to get this done. And we even uh, one off a contractor we never used before. He was actually there installing something else. I think he was the audio guy, uh, but he said he knew how to punch cables. And I'm like, what are you doing? Later? <laughs> hey, guy, what are you doing? <laughs> He's like, punch some wires for you. I'm like, you like money? I'll pay you this. What do you want to do? Yeah. This is, and then he started just going through and punching lots and lots of wires um, and helped us with the testing and things like that. Yeah. Oh, this happened too. Uh, oh, you had man. the drywall people and then you had the people building cabinets. This is actually the cabinet cutouts that went over like where you have the cabinets butted up. Mm -hmm. um, it created all like this is what that's like an inside look at what some of these were. So much of a mess, but oh yeah, well, and that's why I mean, if you're, if you're wondering why there's so many photos, and there's a lot more photos, yeah. it was about documentation. Yes, and that's why Tom mentioned earlier e email. He he responded in any change. There was an email written of that change so that we could document it. It's that's a, that was the most important part of what, not that what we learned, but what we did to be able yeah. to finally get paid on this. And this is what protected us overall. There mm -hmm. was never any um, lawyers or anything involved that got involved at the end. Even though it took them a long time to pay, we were persistent. We referred to our documentation. We right. referred to emails. We kept logs of what was changed. I had everybody contributing photos. We set up a shared Google Photos album in case you're looking for an easy way to do it. And we still use it because it's just so easy to do. Then uh, everyone just shares within those photos. And if you see something, Take a picture of it. If you see something right. questionable, you talk to the other vendors. Matter of fact, feel free. Sometimes we made a series of quick videos where, hey, um, we don't know who did this, but this wasn't like this when we left yesterday, but just to let you guys know. And that's because of the wall moving, things like that. So it really comes down to the same principles of documentation that covers you following up going, especially whenever there's so much flying by uh, verbally that you come back and reply with, hey, this is what I think you asked me to do. I went ahead and did it, just wanted to let you know. And then at the same time, you're updating your billing system, so to speak, right. in real time, making those notes of, all right, what we quoted and what happened are two different things. And once that exceeded, matter of fact, we had a series of uh, to help cover some of the overages, we actually asked them for a couple more times to pay us. We're like, right. this is just a lot of overages. But in the end, we did it. Um, they, It was, uh, boy, that's a walk down memory lane of that day. It was so <laughs> many times we stayed nonstop because we had worked here kind of at the office during the day. And we would spend the rest of the afternoon in the final push. We were there a couple times till 4 a.m. We were right. like <clears throat> nonstop. I also bought a lot of, I bought food and pizza for not just my team. I would come in there and I was, cause it wasn't just us, by the way, we had the other people, we had artists putting wall art up. We had people yeah. installing like the bowling alley. We had, a, there was that place didn't stop. It was almost like this constant shift after shift of people. So I was sometimes the guy that came in with a bunch of pizzas and things like that because yep. be friendly with everybody. Sometimes you need their boom lift because your battery died. And if you're cool with them, you're like, Hey, that guy brought me pizza. He can use my lift today. So we did Absolutely. some swapping of things like that. It was, we kept the environment as friendly as possible forthcoming. Um, Cause you know, all, we're all, trying to reach a goal we're all yeah. trying to get this project done whether you're an electrician a plumber and the the plumber people they i remember they had problems because getting the soda machines hooked up um they used our tubes that were buried to pull wire so 
we had to coordinate with them because some of the wires, not by choice, but there's no way around it. There are the the soda tubes also have some Cat 6 wire in it. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? They're coming up out of the same hole for the cash register. We're like, this was ours. And then some people are like, no, it's ours. And we're like, well, there's only there's one for electrical. We can't use that one. And there's one for us. So um, that's how that tube got shared. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, was, then hopefully was... you were either entertained or uh, we're just looking for, you know, what we did to mitigate this or whatever happened on it. But it was uh, definitely a fun project in some ways. Looking back, I'm smiling. I was certainly not smiling at 4 a.m. Not, not, not in the least. Um, but it's, these things happen. This is a really odd one. And we do so many wiring projects. This is the only one in since 2003 that I've been in business. And even when I worked in corporate, I've never seen such a crazy amount of changes. It was crazy. But, you know, and this shouldn't shy anybody away from doing projects no. like this either. Because <clears throat> things these are going to really happen. the exception. Yeah. You, you just, you need to learn how to document. You need to learn how to make sure you're, you set the correct and, and the right expectations with the general contractor. Yep. Cause the expectation is everything, right? Um, that customer experience, um, the way, the way things are handled, the time in the time frame they should be handled. Don't shy away from projects like this. Embrace them. Yeah. Everything's a lesson learned. And, um, you know, in, in the big picture, we did make money when we break yeah. it all down and we divvied up the piles and we paid all the contractors, even though I got paid later, even if I calculate some interest on that and things like that. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the end, we made money on it. So ultimately, that part was, you know, that's the goal to be profitable on things. Right. So we that that goal was met. Um I don't know if it really was enough for some of the mental issues I had dealing with it. Like just the, <laughs> oh my gosh, are we going to complete this project? But yeah, whatever we did. So here oh, we yeah. are. Here we are smiling about it years later, making a There's YouTube a lot of video about it. going on. <laughs> so hopefully you found this insightful. Let me know in the comments down below. We can always have a more in-depth discussion on the forum on this, uh, but yeah, that's, that's it. This is going to be my simple reply when, Hey Tom, what's the worst wiring project ever? It's this Here one. It is. It, this is this one. All right. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a share project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.